then comes the bulb. Oh, so I had it the other way around. Mm -hmm. So we started the white. Oh, there goes the lights again. Is it low shading? I don't know, Vuko. Sometimes it is. At times it's electricians fixing, you know, making their routine fixings, you know. I'm relieved it's back. I don't like the dark. Yeah, I'm also relieved that it is back. So when they go out again, we don't worry because we are close to each other. Right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Where are we again? Um, electric switch. Oh, yeah. yeah. The electric switch is used so that the electric bulb can be switched on and off. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, these lights. Ay. Ay, bo. Yes, Bon. Hello. Bon. Bon. Electricity, my son. Electricity. Right now, I took off from Bagasi with all this on and off. I'm Vukoman. It's not so bad. You know, when I grew up with my siblings, <laughs> we didn't have electricity. We used to this. What's this? Oh, candela. Candela, yes. Let's try and get oh. some light out of candela. She says that they're the best. Yeah, that's better. Oh, that's better. Yeah. That's better. Mm -hmm. Yo, I wish they could just fix this. They must find a different way to make electricity so that it doesn't cut as much as this. But there is. Remember when last year we were learning about different ways of generating energy? Oh yeah, we learned about renewable energy, sometimes known as clean energy. Yeah, it's made from resources that Mother Nature gives us, resources that won't damage the environment. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, won't damage the environment? Most energy is made from burning resources, like a car burns petrol or a power station burns coal in order to make electricity. But then how is renewable energy made? Ah, oh. they're back. Okay guys, I'll keep the candle light on so that if it goes out again, we know we've got some light. I was saying, oh yeah, hydroelectricity. So here's this picture. It is this one. So you see for hydroelectricity, mm -hmm. basically scientists use big machines so that they can produce electricity. Wait, you can produce energy from water. And the amazing thing is that it does not even consume the water. It just takes advantage of the power of the water when it moves. So the water energy can keep going around in circles and circles and we get more and more electricity. Exactly. We also learned about wind energy. You know, like have you ever seen windmills or big white fans? Hang on, okay. I understand the hydropower energy, but how can you get energy from the wind? The same way. Just think about it. Wind is always blowing, right? So scientists use the speed to generate electricity. There we go. Hmm. So then, do you think you can get energy from the sunshine? Yes, there is. It's called solar power. Do you know how it works? No. Well, Gogo has read a little bit about it, but I can't say I really know about it. I know exactly where we need to go. We need to go to the Wonder Room. Let Let's us go, go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, okay. Ah, there goes the lights again. Guys, it's in the The candle, we can't just leave it on. I can't wait to see what you're going to teach us about solar energy today. Me too, Mvoko. You know, I become so excited when I learn a thing or two from you guys. But before we start, I'm going to teach you things that you already know about the sun. Things I already know about the sun? Like what? Like that the sun is huge and it does much more for us than you actually think. Then I'm glad that we have the sun in winter, eh? Mvoko, you're right. Guys, do you know that without the sun, this earth would have been a very, very cold place? I get cold just thinking mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> the sun does a lot more for us. Like it makes the wind blow that moves the ocean currents also. Yeah, and it also heats up the clouds to make rain and snow and creates all the weather on our planet. But then how exactly does the sun make solar energy then? So basically, solar electricity is created when heat from the sun 
hits the whole solar panels and turns it directly into electricity as you see here. So all the sun has to do is just shine and the, the solar panels will collect the energy. Just like that. Mm. It makes it sound so easy. That's why it's so great, Gogo. So then how do the solar panels convert the sunlight into energy? See, now that's what we're here to find out. We have an insert here that's going to answer all our questions and even show us that the amazing things that people are doing with solar energy. And let's watch then. Press up, let's be to be some fun. Hi, good day. My name is Christopher Steinbach. I represent a company called YG Energy Africa. We're a wholesale uh, importer of solar panels and solar related equipment into South Africa and the African market. Um, I think the focus here today is just to help you guys understand what solar is all about. So why do we need solar power? Well, I think we all know that the, the world is getting more and more intoxicated by, by all the fossil fuels around and there's just such great technology available to harness renewable energy or sustainable energy from the earth around us. I think solar panels are a great source of energy because they use the sun's light and the sun is an ever shining uh, energy source that we can utilize and tap into. How does a solar panel work? Well, you have the sunlight and that sunlight shines onto a solar cell. So we have a module here. Here's just a small example of that. And the sunlight on the solar cell, which is made out of silicon, generates or excites the electrons on the silicon. If you look closely at the solar cell, it's quite a fragile piece of equipment. You can hear yeah, how thin it is. And there's these lines on it. So these lines are like electric circuits. They take the electricity or the electrons that get excited by the sun and take them out of each individual cell. So a number of cells, for example, 60 cells, a module of the size of the left, the smaller module is a 60 cell module. It's a typical size module for a household. And the biggest module, 72 cell module, is a bigger module used for bigger shopping centers or solar parks. Now, each of those is made up of a series, in that case, 72 and 60 cells um, like this. And each of these is getting excited by the sun and evacuating the electrons. So they get evacuated to the back of the solar module. At the back of the solar module, you'll have terminals a little bit better than these, where the voltage comes out. Now the voltage comes out in something we call DC voltage, which is 12 volts. But when you join them all together and you convert it through what we call an inverter, we get AC current, 220 volts AC, similar to that which we have in your wall plug. Okay, so that gives you a brief explanation. The sun excites electrons, the electrons create the energy, and we use that energy once converted to 220 volts. Okay, how long does a solar module last? I mean, it's out there in the sun, in the weather, and it needs to be able to endure a lot of environmental conditions. On the front of a module, you have a, a glass covering to protect it from the sun, and also a coating on that to enhance the sun's rays into the module. On the back of a module, you have a sophisticated uh, plastic, it's not just a normal plastic because it needs to endure the heats and the temperatures from the sun, the wind, the rain and even sand in, in desert type environments. Um, the temperatures of solar modules can go over 80 or even 120 degrees when the sun's shining on them and they're on roofs or again in the desert and hot environments. So it needs to be able to withstand high temperatures, but also very cold temperatures, like in our free state, where it goes well below minus in the evenings. In between that, so just to show you a little bit on the back of the module, we have this type of plastic. Um, there's different types, and, and DuPont offers a Tedlar plastic, which is probably one of the best back sheet materials available. So quite a thick material versus some cheaper materials, which are a lot thinner, but all made to protect and seal the high tech intricate circuitry inside the module. In between that, you have layers of what we call EVA, 
but in simple terms, it's basically a glue. You have the glass, you have a layer of the glue, you have the cell, and then another layer of glue, and then the back sheet. And that gets all sealed together to make up a module, obviously, of the two sizes indicated, but also many sizes in between, from as small as one cell, as you can see here, to various sizes right through to the biggest module possible. Now, when we go to what we can do with a solar cell, we look at various applications. And I think this is where I love solar because it can be used for simple applications like this. Simple home system, cost effective. You can charge a cell phone, you can light, in this case, a number of rooms, even run a small fan or small 12 volt appliances from a small system like this, which is very affordable. But you can also run your home from a smaller system to a larger system, offices, industrial parks, and then of course you get what we call solar farms. Now solar farms are massive farms with up to 300, 350,000 modules on one farm. Typically in South Africa, they're all in the Northern Cape and in the Free State because our best solar resource is there. And these farms are basically power stations, renewable power stations harnessing the sun's light daily. So in South Africa, we currently have 37 of these solar farms in the country. And the government, together with ESCOM, have recently just signed on another 12 of these power plants. So, within the next year or two, all these power plants combined will be able to produce about the same amount of electricity as a half of what Kusile or Mudupi power station produce. However, only using the sun's energy. And that is what makes it exciting. You can power your phone, you can power your home, or you can power the country with solar. Just depends what you want to use it for. When it comes to uh, renewables on, on a larger scale, I think the great benefit is that ultimately the renewables, and not only solar, but together with wind and biofuels and, and different technologies, we'd be able to replace fossil fuels. And the fossil fuels are the, the oily, dirty, burning fuels and, and similar to coal and coal power stations that cause a lot of uh, disease and, and, and toxic environments around us. So over time as these fossil fuel powered stations get old, um, the renewables will be built up more and more. Um, currently, as I said, there's 37 projects in South Africa and there'll soon be 49 just PV projects and that's nearly 5% of South Africa's energy production. But as the older power stations get decommissioned, um, they get too old to be used, more and more PV will be in place and wind and hydro and other technologies and we would have cleaner and cleaner power produced in our country. And I think that's a huge advantage. And the thing is with those technologies like PV and wind and hydro, they're natural. So the energy source is from the environment around us and it produces its power using that environment. Unlike fossil fuels where we need to dig into the ground, disrupt the environment and the earth, um, the, 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 we don't need to do the same with, for example, solar. Um, and as I've mentioned earlier as well, there's, there's ways to combat rainy and windy and cloudy days. Um, just another point, you know, in South Africa, our solar resource is one of the best in the world. Um, our solar resources are more than three times that of Europe. And Europe in some places is already running on 80% of renewable energies. So we have a long way to go and we have a fantastic country and environment to harness the sun and roll out PV in a small capacity or in a large capacity like Eskom and government's doing on a greater and greater scale. And that way we contribute to the environment and a better life for all of those that go after us or come after us. Yo! Did you see all those solar panels? There's so many of them. And I still cannot believe how those solar panels turn the sun into electricity. Just like that. Voila! And we have it. And the best part is the electricity will be made over and over again for years and years. You know. Hey, Bo. 
Buti, speak. Yo, oh, yeah, Bella. Yo, because I was just thinking of really good, simple ideas that could power a light bulb. Then Vuko can finish her homework. Yeah, I'm fine. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Let's go see what you have in mind. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Man of the game. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, speak. electricity with wind, water and the sun. I will show you how. All we need is a lemon, preferably the ones with thin skin. Uh -huh. Any skin will do, but thin skin is always the best. Okay. One galvanized nail, yeah. one copper nail. Galvanized beading has been coated with zinc. Oh, okay. A light bulb and then the conducting wires. Mm. Okay. <laughs> How must we help you? Uh, can you just help me just roll out some of these lemons? Okay, yeah. okay. Is this okay. to loosen the juice? Yes, exactly. Just to make it soft? Yes. Okay. Sugar things are This one is a hard one. But I love it. Yeah. I love doing this. Mm. <laughs> So therapeutic. Oh, my little pace therapeutic. Yes. Mega <laughs> means therapeutic. <laughs> I enjoy doing this, yes. Oh, yours is already served in my books. Yeah, it's squishy. <laughs> I can see that. Nia kose ngati se yata inan ngati na roba roba. Oh, it's so nice. Ah, it's coming. Mm, it smells like lemon juice. Eh? Mm. Hey, we're not so coming. Okay. What's this cut to this end, Zange? Yeah. You have to take the nails, so the first nail, and then you have to pierce it through. Ah, and then that's you put. Yes, this is exciting. You put this part in. I wanna go. And the nails, Zange. And then you connect it. You put this here. Okay. Let me connect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yes, Coco Bunga. I'm telling you, I'm pilled in the mawala. Yeah, I'm sure. Eh, I'm sure. But the copper conductors can be exposed. I'm not going to find a way. Go, 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 And if you want to learn how to do this experiment, you can go to Facebook or watch this episode again on YouTube. Or if you have some questions, go to our WhatsApp group chat. Or if you also want to share a bit of your experiment, go to our WhatsApp group chat also. And if you also want to drop us an email, go to Epic Hangout at sapc.co.za. So we meet again at Goko's house. It's goodbye. Bye.